The Bulldogs live to survive another day. They're starting to earn this moniker, the Cardiac Kids. Finding ways to win late or even if it's close, it doesn't matter. It started on Sunday with a one-run win over Illinois Chicago, which just so happens to be the 10th straight game that the Bulldogs have run that was a one-run contest. Then you follow that up with beating South Alabama, the team that beat you on Friday. This team just does not know the word elimination. They continue to find ways to win games late, and they just they don't take pitches off. They don't take plays off, even if... They're getting, even if they find themselves down, which they did against South Alabama, they find a way to fight back and get the win. So you got two more wins to go against Southern Miss, but let's talk about that double header victory for the Bulldogs first. Our guys have been incredible, fellas. I mean, every single day, um, you know, every single day those guys answer the bell. You know, they're, they're available every day, they want the ball. Um, they're total team guys. Offensively tonight, um, you know, hit several big home runs. Uh, guys won at bats all, all night tonight. So um, just a terrific team win in all three phases of the game. You know, pitching, defense, and hitting. Um, big time effort from our guys tonight and, and allow us to get to championship Monday, man. And we have to recognize New Hope's Wells Davis. The kid was pretty much the offense for South Alabama to the first six innings or so. The only two hits that South Alabama had was two solo home runs by Wells Davis. Kid had a fantastic end to this season, and we got a chance to catch up with him in the postgame press conference afterwards. Just trying to stay on the fastball, and um, I had a, went to a full count with Denver the first time, and just knew he was going to challenge me with a fastball with nobody on base early in the game, so got extended on that ball. And then comes around the next at bat, he flips him breaking ball in, and I kind of had a feeling I had took him out backside that he might try to stick one in on me. It's 91, 92, and a good fastball. So I just kind of geared up for that and got it and didn't miss it. The thing I learned the most is from the seniors that didn't play. They never blinked. They never complained. They never, you know, went through the motions. They showed up every day, you know, rooting for the guy in front of them, whether it's a freshman playing in front of a senior. He, he never stopped rooting for him, And that just, you know, you got – 35 guys on the team, you got 9, 10 guys playing every day, and you can't play all of them, but, you know, when you have the right guys, like coach recruits the right guys with the right character, right personality, and just, they just want to win, and learning from guys like that, I mean, you're not always going to play every game, and just not to, not to pout, soul, wish you were in, just, just to keep going, and that's all about winning as a team, it's not about individuals. This South Alabama team will most certainly be back next year. They're going to be very good next season with plenty of good arms and talent returning, including the aforementioned Wells Davis. But we turn our attention to the Bulldogs. Two more wins to go. You got halfway through the Eliminators. Now they'll have to beat Southern Miss twice to advance to the Supers. This is sort of the matchup that we've been waiting this entire time for since we got to Hattiesburg with Southern Miss, Mississippi State. We will have it. And for us to get two of them, the Bulldogs will have to win the first one at 1 p.m. It's do or die, win or go home, and MSU wouldn't have it any other way. We're really excited, looking forward to uh, the challenge of playing a terrific Southern Mississippi team. I think they won their 50th ball game today. Um, they're an outstanding team. They're extremely aggressive at the plate. They defend it at a high level, and they throw strikes on the mound. So uh, the 50 wins are, are certainly no accident. They're a terrific club. They're the number one seed. We're fired up to be playing on Monday. I feel like we're playing really well right now, and, and I know these guys up here are jacked up for the challenge tomorrow. Anytime you play two Mississippi teams together, uh, whether it be in Pearl or up at State or even up in uh, that school up north, but... Um, you know, it's going to be a great crowd. Um, you know, we're going to travel well. Our fans always travel well for us and support us. Um, you know, and being home uh, here at their home field is going to be, you know, they're going to have a, a great turnout of fans too. And, you know, I expect to have atmosphere to be great. Um, you know, tons of fans, you know, it's going to be a great, you know, championship Monday, like Coach said. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to the challenge. So, buckle up. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Who knows with this team? You never really know what's going to happen. Now, Andy Canizero didn't come out and say it in the postgame press conference, but they do expect Jacob Billingsley to start that first game against Southern Miss. They're hoping it's going to start at 1 p.m., but the tarp is on the field right now, and we are expecting a lot more rain coming up Monday morning, afternoon, maybe evening. 
We're going to hope and pray to Mother Nature that she's going to give us uh, some openings to be able to play these games. But we'll see how it all happens between the Bulldogs and the Golden Eagles. Again, th this is the, these are the games that everyone's been waiting for. All the Southern Miss fans have been clamoring for a shot at Mississippi State here on their home turf, and they will get it coming up Monday afternoon and Monday evening. We will have much more from here at the Pete coming up right here on WCBI Sports. Reporting here in Hattiesburg, Robbie Donahoe for WCBI Sports.